Hey guys, it's Corbett Lunsford from the Building Performance Workshop. As you can see, I am standing here about to do a blower door test. Now, if you've never seen one of these tools before, you will, in your hometown, by the next decade, every new construction home will have this test done. Now, if this is the only performance test you ever have done on your house, you're kind of missing out. And if you're a professional watching this, and this is the only test that you ever do, it's great. That's 101, but you're missing out on a whole bunch of extra information that you can be taking advantage of. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to do zonal pressure testing, and that's a fancy name for figuring out how connected certain zones in the house or rooms in the house are to the house versus to outside, and pressure panning. Those are basically the same test. All we're going to need in order to do this is your blower door setup, your manometer, a box, and a hose. First things first, whenever you set up for a blower door test and we're about to induce a pressure in the house so that we can get it different from outside, we baseline our manometer. Before doing any of this testing, you need to clear that baseline out because the pressure reading on the blower door needs to be not adjusted. Now, of course, we're shooting towards 50 pascals difference on channel A and we want to know what the flow is. This is the basic blower door test, is how many CFM are we moving at 50 pascals? That's a good place to start, but now that we're at 50, I have a choice. I can keep this running at 50 pascals, or I can back it off to 25 pascals and do the same exact test. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. just for volume so that we can hear ourselves think for a second. Now, if I only have this piece of equipment and that's all the test equipment that I own, that's okay, you can do this test. What I would do is stop this from running in automated mode and I would actually just get this thing running. In manual and bring it to 25 on channel A. so that I can see that I'm actually hitting 25. So we're hanging out right around 24, 25 right now. Now, what I can do at this point is literally disconnect this. And since I've got my fan running on manual, it won't move, it'll keep me at 25. Now this is dumb. This is the dumb way to do it because now I have disconnected my tiny computer from my fan, and if I was to close off a giant room that's inside the house, like the basement, for example, the fan is gonna do something totally different to the house when the basement is not connected to it. So I will not be at 25 pascals or at 50 or whatever I set my fan at once I close that door. Now I'm at a different number. So my numbers are way more accurate if I can keep this thing plugged in here and use a second manometer. This came with my duct testing kit, or uh, I just have it on hand because I like to do a really accurate zonal pressure and pressure pan testing. So let's go ahead and use this for the rest of the time here. Now what I've done is kick the blower door back up to 50 pascals, which is what we'll do the rest of this at, since most of you are probably used to 50 instead of 25. Uh, also, we're not standing right next to the fan so that we can hear ourselves think. Now all I've got in my hands are an extra manometer for accuracy. I could be using the one off of the blower door again if I wanted to and a short hose. What I'm gonna do is connect this hose to the input tap on either one of my channels as long as I'm measuring pressure on that channel. So um, the name of the test tells you what goes on the input side always on the manometer. So this is called a zonal pressure test. So we're gonna measure the pressure in a zone with reference to the rest of the house, which is at negative 50 right now. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is toss this hose into a room and close the door. Very important, that last part there, because if you don't close the door, there's not a pressure differential. So what you can see right here, the pressure in this room is roughly five pascals with reference to the rest of the house. Now what that means is we always use percentages to represent what that means. That's five fiftieths. I divide that number by whatever I have the blower door running at. So if it was five fiftieths, that's a 10% connection to outside in that room when the door is closed to inside and the window is closed to outside. So it's kind of sitting in a little bubble and it's more inside than outside. Now we want to do this room as well and we can use a comparative analysis. 
So again, I close the door, and as you can see, this room is a lot more connected to outside. We have almost 15 pascals out of 50. So again, the math on that is 15 divided by 50, that's a 30% connection to outside. Now, which of these two rooms represents a bigger opportunity for improvement for my family's comfort? That room. Now, my job is to find out what in that room is creating that bigger connection to outside. So, we're going to go in there and we start using pressure pan testing. Now that we know that there is an opportunity for improvement in this room, it's our job to figure out what exactly that means. Uh, now, the first thing that I always do is use my eyes and my ears to look at what's going on and always inspect before I start testing things because um, you'll look like an idiot if you start testing things that you're not uh, looked at first. Now, if you're a homeowner, make sure that you have asked for this extra layer of testing. Again, the zonal pressure testing got us into this room. Pressure panning is what we're about to do. Now, this is a pressure pan. This is a box. I built myself. Uh, I didn't manufacture it myself. I just tore it into a box. Uh, I put this layer of duct tape on the edge of it. That's one thing that duct tape is actually good for, to create a better seal. And I've got the hose, the pressure hose, from the input tap on one of the channels of my manometer all the way through a little hole inside the box. So now I can monitor the pressure inside this box with reference to the rest of the house. This is exactly like a zonal pressure test in every way except that I am measuring the pressure in zones that don't have a door that I can close on them. So, things like uh, ducts, which we're going to get to in a minute, or, for example, here, as you can see, master bathroom, master bedroom. Now, this is an item that I've pointed out in another one of my videos, ceiling height changes. Whenever you see that the ceiling height changes, here we've got a 9-foot ceiling, and in here we have an 8-foot ceiling. That means that there is something going on inside of the construction assemblies that is probably not lining up. So I am very interested now in the leakage of this wall cavity. This is a totally interior wall cavity. I would call it inside the enclosure if I was thinking about it that way, but it's in fact not, and I will show you that right now. So what I'm going to do is cover up this light switch right here with this box. And what I will effectively be doing is measuring the pressure inside this wall cavity with reference to the house. Now, since we're on the base floor and what's below us is a slab, there is no air leakage down through the slab. What I'll be measuring is top plate air leakage. So, we'll go ahead and cover this up. And as you can see, on channel A, I have about 25 pascals showing up. That means that this wall cavity right here in my master bathroom, which is totally inside my house, there's no way that it's not, is equally connected to the house and to outside. That is wonderful news because that is a huge opportunity for improvement. The other way to think of that is that's majorly screwed up because there is no way that this wall cavity should be anywhere close to outside. That's ridiculous. This is happening in your house right now and in your mom's house. You need to really pay attention to this stuff. Now, I'm able to use this pressure pan on all kinds of different things. So let's go ahead and take a look at a recessed light, for example. Here's a recessed light above me. This is a can light. This is uh, what a lot of people have all over their house, especially if you've had your house renovated or an addition put on. These things are like little chimneys into whatever is behind them. In this case, it's the ceiling cavity outside of my condo. So I'm gonna put my pressure pan over the recessed light, and you can see here on my manometer that I've got, again, about 22 pascals. Now, what I am finding out is that the ceiling cavity above my apartment is kind of inside my apartment and kind of outside my apartment. That's, again, opportunity for improvement, but also something that I never would have expected if I didn't know to depend on diagnostics. Let's take a look at the duct system, and this is going to blow your mind. Now we're back in the blower door room, so it's a little bit louder in here, but I'm going to cover up this duct, which is closer to the furnace than the one I'm about to do. This one shows up about 9 pascals. 9 fiftieths is about 20% connected to outside. Now let's test one that's a little bit further away. Over 15 pascals. That's over a 30% connection to outside. Now, there is the one I just tested, and this is the one that's over 10% more connected to outside. Why in the world would there be such a huge increase in the connectedness to outside between one and the other? And that's because there's a giant gaping hole in my ductwork. So now I know exactly where to cut into the ceiling or use a boroscope to start investigating a little bit more thoroughly so that I can solve the problem without ripping all of the ductwork out of the house.
Now, in order to wrap your mind around what zonal pressure testing and pressure panning means and how it works, let's think about this. If I have this bottle of amino, uh, which I'm not going to actually put to my mouth, but if I was to suck on this like I was a blower door, eventually, within a few seconds, what would happen is my lips get sucked into this thing because I cannot exhaust any more uh, air from this thing because it's, it's a vacuum. I can't create a vacuum. So let's imagine that I have sucked on this so that this is at negative 50 and uh, the world outside is at zero. That's exactly like what we've got in a blower door test. If I was to magically partition off part of this while I am sucking on it, what would the pressure change be inside that partitioned off portion of this bottle? It wouldn't be anything. It would still remain as sucked on as it was when it got partitioned off. So you can think about it the same way. If I test the bedroom and close the door, and all of a sudden the pressure in the bedroom changes, it's because it's getting relief from outside. So if I put a hose into a room and close that door and nothing happens in that room, that means that there is no air leakage pathways in that room leading to outside. This is a really useful thing. So the second thing to think about is duct work. Now these two ducts that we just tested with a 20% and a 30% connection outside, you don't use the same interpretation to figure out what that means. The duct system is essentially just like a long dining room in a mansion uh, in Connecticut where there's doors uh, up and down the hall so that the servants can come in and out with the roast beef and all that stuff, right? If I was to close off one of those doors, the pressure in that hall should not change. If it does, even a little bit, that's sign of a massive problem because I've got all these other open doors just like I have in my duct system above me. If three or more readings are over 4%, and again, we're talking about 20%, 30%. If three or more are over 4%, then the system is leaky. You don't have to worry about testing it with a duct tightness test. Uh, it would be a waste of time because we know for a fact that there is opportunity for improvement in this duct system. If everything is below 3% and only two readings are above 2%, then we know for a fact that the duct system is tight enough and we don't have to worry about testing it or sealing it because we know there's not a big opportunity for improvement. If it's between those two, then we might want to recommend a duct tightness test, and you can see another video on that uh, on the screen below, in order to figure out whether there is an opportunity for improvement or not. If you're still confused, remember, it's all in this book right here on this page, uh, so you don't have to remember everything that I just said. I don't remember all of that. I had to actually look at my own book before I told you. Um, so this is totally previewable at homeperformancebook.com. All of the pages in it are absolutely accessible by you on the website. So uh, if you are not receiving my emails every two weeks, you need to get on my bulletin, either for homeowners or for pros, so that you can get more information, so that you can take charge of the houses that you live in or the houses that you work on. To that end, there is a free mastermind webinar first Wednesday of every single month where I go through 30 minutes of actual jobs that I've done using this advanced testing. So I, I want you to share in that. Uh, I hope also that you'll share comments below. Go ahead and feel free to comment. I always reply. Um, if you agree or if you disagree or if you have extra tips for people, that'd be great. Thanks very much for watching. Tune in next time.